Now today, I would be taking up a topic from medicine, and this topic from medicine happens to be from neurology specific, and the topic is Parkinson's disease or Parkinsonism. I've been seeing a lot many questions being asked from Parkinson's disease or Parkinsonism, and I will be taking you through this class in a more specific manner as far as your examinations are concerned. So it will be covering the high yield points, the most frequently asked questions, and what is important from you from a perspective of your examinations. So the first thing you have to remember, sometimes there are alternative names asked for a disease. And this Parkinson's disease is having multiple names. And one of the names given to this disease is paralysis agitans. And the other name is shaking paralysis. So you have to remember that these are the alternative names of the same disease. That's important. Now, what is this Parkinson's disease? You have to remember that in the brain, you have got certain areas, certain areas which are rich in certain substances. And in the brain, you have got this area, which is given the name as substantia nigra. Basically, having a look at the broader term, there are these nuclei in the brain which are given the name as basal ganglia and the basal ganglia are concerned with the movements and among one of the nucleus is the substantia nigra now basically substantia nigra why it is given the name as nigra nigra means something blackish and this nucleus is a bit more blackish or a bit more pigmented because of the presence of melanin so it stains a bit darker and that is why its name is given the name as substantia nigra. Now this substantia nigra happens to be rich in dopamine and dopamine is one important substance and the deficiency of dopamine is the basic pathological cause of Parkinson's disease. Now I will go to the figure and come back to the text later on. Over here you can see this area. This is the area on the one side, and this is the area on the other side. And these are the nuclei which are given the name as substantia nigra. So substantia nigra, you have to remember that the, there's a problem in this nucleus substantia nigra that gives rise to the clinical manifestations of Parkinson's disease. This is at the level of the midbrain. Now, so we have come across the important fact that substantia nigra is involved in the pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease. Now it is basically a neurodegenerative disorder and seen particularly in elderly. So it is seen often in elderly and what is the problem? The problem is the dopamine levels in the substantia nigra decreased as I mentioned. So few things you have to remember Paul Parkinson's disease, paralysis agitants, shaking palsy, neurodegeneration, substantia nigra, depletion of dopamine. That's important. And a disease of preferably the elder. And this nucleus you have to remember over here, this might be asked as a clinical image-based question in your neurology, in your anatomy, or in your medicine. Now, what does a patient present with? You have to remember that the patient usually presents with a classical trio, but it is not always the case. So the three important features of Parkinson's disease are number one, the presence of tremor, number two, the rigidity, and bradykinesia. What we mean by these things is that number one, there is tremor, and what type of tremor? The type of tremor which we see in Parkinson's disease is the resting tremor. It is not the action tremor. The once the patient is at rest, at that point of time, that tremor appears. And once a patient makes a movement, the tremor disappears. So it is classic. You have to remember these things. These are very important points. In Parkinson's disease, the type of tremor is the resting tremor. And number second is the presence of rigidity. The patient will be rigid. And number third would be bradykinesia. Kinesis means movement in physics. And brady means slow. So there will be slow movements. And in severe cases, there will be a kinesia. The total absence of movements. A patient is incapacitated 
to such an extent that he or she cannot move himself or herself. That is important. And what it affects? It affects the gait and posture, which I will be coming in a short period of time. So tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia are the three classical features of Parkinson's disease. That's important. Now, pathologically, what is seen is something which we give the name as Levy bodies. And you have to remember that there are many bodies which are asked, eponym bodies which are asked in pathology, which are asked in medicine. But over here, Levy bodies are somehow characteristic of Parkinson's disease. And what are they? They are in eosinophilic intraneural inclusion granules important and this figure you remember and this over here this is an area which shows a levy body so this is a levy body in the pigmented neurons of the substantia nigra so this is a pigmented neuron over here and inside the pigmented neuron, you have got the Levy body. So this is important. An image-based question or sometimes a one-liner asked, Levy's body are characteristic of, and you have to remember Parkinson's. Now, what are the specificities of the tremor? The tremor is four to six hertz tremor. You know physics and four to six hertz tremor, and that may be pill rolling in nature, and it is resting tremor, as I mentioned previously. So it is not action tremor, number one. Number second, there can be rigidity, and rigidity can be either of the type lead pipe or cog wheel. That's the difference in which there's a resistance. There's a difference in the resistance pattern to the movement or the rigid, rigidness. And you have to remember that both types can be present in Parkinson's disease. And number third, bradykinesia progress into akinesia. And that will be manifested by slow movement. And especially how will you diagnose? There will be slowness in rising from a stick position and a patient cannot be able to make movements so comfortably. That's important and inability to stop walking forward. A patient will be having inhibition. Now, what is the other important fact? Uh, many of the experienced neurologists, many of the experienced physicians, they pick up a patient of Parkinson's just at the arrival, just at the arrival. The nature by which the patient comes into the clinic, walks in, his face, his appearance, that's important. And what's important, there will be expressionless species. There will be almost no expression in severe cases on the face of the patient. And it is said to be like, almost like a statue. That means mask-like species, that's important the lack of facial expression because we have been blessed with the muscles in the face which are subcutaneous and they exactly depict our state of mind whether we are happy whether we are in sorrow or any other thing but over here the facial expression is not does not exist at all so there is lack of facial expression and classically we give this term the name as mask-like facies, expressionless facies, and number second, there can be alterations in the voice. The voice will not be in a normal state, and that is called the name is hypophonic voice. As far as the neurological examination is concerned, the plantars are flexing. And there's this important Meyerson sign, which has been asked many a times. And what is this Meyerson sign? You know that repeated tapping on the glabella would produce a sustained blinking reflex. So you have to look into the eyes and there will be a sustained blinking reflex once you repetitively tap over the glabella. So that's important. And as far as the speech is concerned, indistinct, you cannot make out the words from a patient with Parkinsonism with distinction. That's important. And the tender reflexes are unaltered. That's important. And tender reflexes are not affected that much. Now, the patient, once he walks, he or she walks, they take small shuffling gates. So small shuffling steps. The gait is of such a nature that they take small steps. And that gait is usually given the name as festinal gait in some occasions. Now, how do you diagnose again? So there will be difficulty in maintaining balance because a patient will be a bit ataxic and there will be dysphagia because of the involvement of the muscles of the esophagus, dysarthria because of the voice production, abnormal voice, and difficulty in stopping suddenly. So patients will not be able to miss initiate movements, patients will not be able to stop at the right point and there will be impaired balance. So the balance is not uh, there. So the patient might stagger and fall. 
and rapid small steps, piston and gait. That's important. The arm swing will be reduced. The strides will be short and slow to start walking. These are some of the ways by which you can diagnose a patient once you make him to walk, once you make him to talk, or once you make him to do certain activities. So all these things will be compromised. Now this is how a patient of Parkinson's will end. This will be small shuffling gates and you can see that there will be a small distance between the two feet and this is given the name as small shuffling gate. Now uh, coming to the treatment part of it, the treatment of Parkinson's disease happens to be uh, based on a number of drugs and many medicines are given some medicines prove to be effective and some at some point of time do not prove to be effective that's important and one of the important thing is that we because there's a deficiency of dopamine we give dopamine from outside and the one of the for most medicines which is given the treatment of Parkinson's is levodopa so we give levodopa as the mainstay of therapy that means we just see the deficiency of dopamine is there and we just um, give the dopamine from the outside that's it levodopa so, and carbidopa carbidopa and levodopa combination because carbidopa is an inhibitor of the enzyme that breaks down peripheral dopamine in the body and therefore it is used to decrease the dop dopamine a administered so it helps in giving smaller doses of dopamine that's important bromocryptine is one drug which you have to remember for i will not go into the details of the pharmacology at this point of time but just a passing reference of these drugs bromocryptine and one important thing which has been asked many a times there is this antiviral drug amantidine amantidine is basically a drug which is antiviral but it has been seen to have a role in parkinson's disease so that's important and pergolide has also been used in in some instances and the anticholinergic drugs anticholinergic drugs are basically used for a different purpose but they have to they have been found to have a role in the treatment of parkinsonism so you have to remember levodopa carbidopa combination the bromocryptine pergolide amantity and benzotropine as an anticholinergic drug which is given in the treatment of parkinson's disease now is that all about parkinson's disease no you have to remember that how do we diagnose or arrive at a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease? One is the history and the examination, that's important. And then there is this that scanning, which is the stratium uh, dopamine uh, transporter scanning using the SPECT or the PET, positron emission tomography, which is sometimes used in the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease once we have the extensive lesions within the midbrain. That's important. And in addition to that, you have to remember that Parkinson's disease can occur in isolation, but it is not always that it has been found that Parkinson's disease just has got a differential diagnosis. It is similar to certain other diseases and it can occur in association with many diseases. And what are the important diseases occur in association with? And you have to remember that there's this Huntington's disease. And Huntington's disease is uh, having a uh, property of having Huntington's chorea. And Huntington's disease is one important association of Parkinson's disease. Then there is the another thing, the frontotemporal dementia. Sometimes Parkinson's disease can be associated with frontotemporal dementia. In addition to a lot many varieties of spinocerebellar ataxias. Spinocerebellar ataxias happen to be a big group of diseases, but you have to remember its association with Parkinsonism. And number uh, fourth is important you have to remember that there are certain drugs which can uh, mimic uh, and cause symptoms and disease similar to that of parkinsonism and what are those drugs metoclopramide you have to remember metoclopramide is one important drug which can give rise to symptoms like parkinson mptp it was a toxin in the past which was concerned with development of signs and symptoms similar to that of Parkinsonism and there is this important uh, element which is given the name as manganese and manganese in high concentration has been found to produce symptoms exactly similar to 
Parkinsonism. And you have to remember that this is this disease which is given their name as Wilson's disease, which is characterized by excessive accumulation of copper. It is also given the name as hepatolenticular degeneration because in here the copper deposits itself within the liver, hepatolenticular within the net lenticular nucleus of the brain, and that's why Wilson's disease is given the name as hepatolenticular degeneration. And the hepatolenticular degeneration has been found in association with Parkinson's disease as well as one important clinical condition neuroacanthosis neuroacanthosis is one clinical condition which is associated with Parkinsonism so this is something about the Parkinson's disease or the Parkinsonism which you have to remember these happen to be very high yield points what I have mentioned you and they have been asked many a times repeated many a times and i would encourage and emphasize and impress upon you just to go through this class repeatedly so that you get a grasp of this topic in the truest sense of the word i wish you best of luck for your exams thanks a lot